hello Andre, hello Uri. Um, we are at Bola Aviation Festival in Lisbon and we just have had a very amazing session talking about how Fetcher's AI is helping Azul, one of the largest airlines in Latin America, get the most out of technology on, on the pricing scene. So we have Andre, who is the director of revenue management and planning, and Yuri, who is a chief AI officer at Fetcher. Um, I would like to ask you, how did this partnership between Azul Airlines and Fetcher started? And how has been um, basically being um, rolled out to help Azul make the best out of the pricing? Uh, well, I can start. Uh, our partnership started back in 2022 uh, in the post pandemic world. We were first looking at uh, what kind of solutions were out there in the market for new technologies, especially on the pricing side, where we did not have any systems uh, yet so far. And as I said on stage, we were drowning in a sea of uh, Excel spreadsheets and uh, SQL uh, queries. And that's when we found Fetcher and started working together. Can you walk us through the onboarding journey and how it works from the initial pilots that you, you conducted all the way into the full-scale deployment of Fetcher technology at Azul? Okay, I think uh, the key for the success of the implementation was doing it little by little. Instead of doing a Big Bang implementation, we decided to go uh, on a much slower pace, adding uh, a definite setup of markets uh, at each week or each month. So we gradually started scaling up 10, initially 10 markets a week, and then we moved it to 50 more markets a week, up to the point when we realized that we had uh, almost 50% uh, of our network covered, and we decided to do the full implementation. Mm -hmm. What were the main challenges that you found during the implementation, and how you worked with, how your team worked together with Fetcher's team to, to overcome that? I think the major challenge for us uh, was, the, was the culture management uh, in terms of how do we work with new technologies. Our teams are very experienced teams who have been working with uh, the same solutions for 15, 20 years. And uh, changing the, the mindset and the framework uh, was the, the biggest challenge for us. So I think uh, what helped us a lot in this, in this process was Fetcher's capabilities of explaining what was going uh, on behind the models and their explainability modules that they helped us uh, deal better with the models and help us uh, with the implementation of the technologies by our analysts and by our teams. And how has the Fetcher technology changed the way that Azul works with pricing? What can you tell us about that? I think it. Uh, I think the biggest change that that, that happened is we we waste way way less time doing manual work, uh, inputting fares in the systems, filing fares. Uh, preparing fares, fares for a mode and that kind of stuff. And we have more time to strategize and uh, think on how revenue management can integrate better with other business units in the company, as well as how to monitor competition more effectively. Mm -hmm. And what sort of measurable results have you obtained since you have adopted the Fetch solution? I'm talking in terms of revenue performance, for example, uh, in, in terms of forecasting and agility to um, basically manage the pricing. Yeah. Uh, when we started implementing and we had few markets to compare to our, to our uh, bigger sample of markets that were not being managed by Fetcher, that work was easier to see what was the revenue uplift being generated. And we saw figures uh, between 3 and 5% of, of revenue uplift in the very beginning. Of course, uh, translating this becomes harder as we increase the number of markets that we are managing because we cannot do the, the A-B testing anymore because the Fetcher has become the whole sample. And in terms of analyst hours, we save it more than uh, 2,000 analyst hours per year, which uh, for me that translates in uh, about 10% uh, of my total analyst time available for, for work in price. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you started step by step in different uh, routes. Um, how scalable has this solution proven to be uh, across Azul's whole network, the different regions and the different customer server, uh, the different customer segments that you are serving? Yes. Um, that's, I think this is one of the, of the best uh, 
use case we have because Fetcher is a scalable solution. So I'm, I'm very glad that we implemented it uh, when we were, I would say, 30% smaller than we are right now. And I'm pretty sure it can be scalable up to infinity at this point. Uh, so I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with the scalability levels that we have with Fetcher. And uh, I think it's, it's part of a robust solution for, for a legacy carrier problem. Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, heard how it has worked so far for Azul, and we have here Dr. Yuri, Yuri Sholami, who is going to, um, is it possibly the best person to explain how this model works, right? So for those less familiar, can you explain us a little bit more what the large market model, the LMM, is and how it powers Fetcher's pricing engine? Yeah, so the large market model is a model based on the same principles of generative AI that we all know, like in ChatGPT and uh, visual uh, generative AI like DALI. But uh, there is a difference here where it is trained on market data. So because it's trained on market data, it can predict quite accurately what's going to be the next market move, how would every... Uh, change in the market impact the competitors the demand and so on and because of that capability it's a very good baseline to make simulations simulate what would happen in, in the market in every step that uh, we are doing and that's how the system is work it's uh, it's doing endless simulations scanning the uh, the landscape of possible decision making and choosing the right pricing policy that would generate maximum work for the airline. Mm -hmm. And from Azul's perspective, how does this LMM model um, differs from other more traditional revenue management tools? I think it helps us uh, create more context, context on the data that we already have uh, at our disposal. Uh, and it helps us uh, generate more insights with the data because we can we can actually ask questions and have them answered and uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way than uh, an analyst would traditionally just uh, try and dig in the data. So it's much easier for us to generate insights and to connect more dots of what's going on in our revenue environment with our data. And um, back to the model, um, what kind of data signals and market inputs do you use in the system to make, the, make it dynamic? And, and provide this sort of real-time pricing intelligence. Yeah, so uh, one of the beauties of such a system is its capability to digest many different sources of data. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we get from the, the airline uh, some data, but uh, we make sure that no private information is included in the data. So, for example, get ticketing data, booking data, flight schedules, excluding anything that is PII. And on top of that, uh, we add more public types of data uh, relating, for example, to uh, events, to weather, to, to uh, capital markets. We have found some, that some fluctuations in capital markets are very uh, predictive in the market dynamics. And all of that data is consolidated into one space that is feeding the large market model and training. Mm -hmm. And how does this technology change the day-to-day -day, uh, work that you do at the Zool, at, at the revenue management team? I would say we do less uh, firefighting and we focus much more on strategy right now than, uh, than what we used to do a couple years ago. Uh, I think it frees up time for what's really important which is the strategy and the focus on the business, mm -hmm. on the business decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, Fetcher has recently closed a Series C funding round with Salesforce Ventures. Um, following this Series C funding round, what are the new developments and, and product capabilities that, that you're working on to scale this system further? Yeah, so the, there is an expected expansion of our activity in various dimensions. If uh, the first dimension is just going uh, to other airlines in the context of pricing, uh, some other dimensions would be uh, making different types of decisions because uh, 
in the case of Azure Airlines, we have made pricing decisions, but decisions can be also made relating to inventory, to, to network scheduling, uh, to operational de decisions, crew, and so on. And another dimension would be uh, uh, businesses that are not airlines. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, uh, you know, hospitality, mm -hmm. uh, car rentals, and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And how do you envision bringing more airline partners on board on, on, to fetch her to benefit from the sort of advantages that Azul is already uh, enjoying with your system? Yeah, so uh, we currently have a flow of many uh, potential uh, new customers that are knocking on the door and want to, to enjoy all of these, uh, all of these advantages. And uh, we, uh, we are making some efforts to choose the right partners to, to go into the uh, different uh, scale-ups that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And back to Azul, um, from your point of view, what advice would you give to other airlines that are considering adopting AI and machine learning as a tool, for example, in revenue management? I would just say do it, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, this new technology enables the whole market, the whole industry to have better revenue levels. Uh, so it will prevent uh, dilution across, across players and uh, I think overall it's going to lead to better pricing decisions. So my recommendation is absolutely do it. <laughs>